Mathematics Advanced Subsidiary Level, Paper 1, 2022, Part 5. Question number 10. This is, can you see it's a sin graph, but can you see it was translated a little bit? Okay, so it's a little bit changed. We'll start. The diagram shows the curve, it's a sin graph, plus C, and it's between 0 and 360, as you can see there. <clears throat> Find the values of the integers A, B, and C. Now, you can look on page 162 in my textbook. Uh, try now 16. That's a nice one. Try now 16. Um, <clears throat> yes. And then I will come now to, I think, another page which I wrote here is page 161. You can look at that table. And I wrote also example 11. Okay, but let's first think a normal sin one. So we, we have to compare it with just a normal one. So a normal one will be, say, for example, like this. That's 360. <clears throat> and it will be one normal, I mean. Let me rather write it more mathematically. If it's one, one, and plus zero. So, and then it will be the lowest point there will be negative one. Okay. <clears throat> so, now I must look. Now, if I can see, now I must first know what the formula determines. And I want to just show you, um, and I think that's what I wrote, page 161. I just want to go to page 161 and check quickly there if I can see that. Because I'm looking for that equation indicating, yes, page 161. If you see that... Say, for example, y equals a sin bx plus c. So, this affects the amplitude. So, this is the amplitude. Okay. So, that means how, how um, vertical it's stretch. This b affects the period. And this is the vertical translation. It means if the whole, whole graph is moving upwards or downwards. Vertical translation. Okay, now let's start with the amplitude. A normal one, actually if you look at that, now I will want to take another color. If you look at that, it will be 2, but then it's 1. But if you look now at 3 and you look to negative 1, so it's 4. Do you see that? Now, if it's 4, so it's double. So instead of 1, this value of a will just now be 2. Did you see that? Because it's double. It's not 2. It's going to be 4. So 4 divided by 2, it's going to be 2. The period. Now, it's almost like it makes one complete wave. It's 1. But if you look here, it's almost like 1, there's 1. And then if you look here, and there's one. And if you look there, it's one. Can you see it's three? Okay. So I'm going to say in the place of B, it's not just one, but the period is going to be three. And now the translation. Okay, so I must look how much it's moved up. Now, if it was, say for example, it, it's now three. So it was suppose, if it was two, it was suppose, um, I just want to show you. It, it was supposed to be negative, but a, a 2, 1. Can I rather do, just show you here? Okay. A 2, 1. If it was 2. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Then it would just be there 2. And it would be there negative 2. But can you see now the negative 2 is moved up? Just how many units? Actually, just one. And that one is also moved up 1 to 3. So it's now at 3 and it negative 1. So actually it moved up just 1 unit. Did you see that? If it moved down, it's minus 1. So therefore, <clears throat> I can say uh, y is equal to, uh, um, I'll find the values. Okay, I will now write the values. But it's going to be 2 sin um, 3x plus 1. So therefore, I can say the value of a is 2. The value of b, look, they want you to write it down. The value of c is 2. So 
find the values of the integers. Write it like that. Okay, so it's just a little bit work from the original one and see what they did and know what the values mean. This is amplitude. It means how much it is stretched vertically. And this is how much the waves is, is either, um, it's almost like the frequency is more or, or, it's, or it's stretched, I think, horizontally. Okay, so that, if I must put it like that. And the C is like moving the whole graph up or down. Okay. Now, how do I find the period? The period, I take the 360 and I just divide it by that free. Okay? And that means after how many degrees does it make a full wave? And if you look, it's making there a full wave at 120. Okay? And then if the curve is now reflected in the x-axis, write down the new equation. It means you are taking this curve and you just throw it over the x-axis. Okay, so what will it now be? Now, as soon as it's reflected in the x-axis, it's, it's always a negative. So there's only two positions that's going to, instead of positive 2, it will be, not divide, mm, let's draw the go. Uh, no, okay. It will be negative 2x. This middle will be the same. Nothing with that period change. But instead of plus 1, it, it's going to come down negative 1. And that's how it's going to be. Let's go to the exam report. Okay. Um, it's question number 10. A and B fairly well answered. Take note that Y intercept with trigonometric graphs is not necessarily the Y C, C value. Yes, no. Okay. And then they gave you the values, uh, which was, oh, I see now. <laughs> Sorry. I see that my value of C, I just wrote incorrectly. Instead of, I wrote two, and it's actually just how many units that it moved up. It's just one. So I will just go and correct it. And then the period is 120. And then I just, so let's just go back. I don't know why I made um, that mistake. Stupid. Maybe a little bit late again. Okay, so let's just go. Okay, there, there I wrote it correct. Do you see plus one? And now that I see on the report, I realized I didn't write a one there. I wrote a two. Okay. So be careful not to make unnecessary mistakes. Okay. Question number 11. Now, just by looking at it, I can see this is vectors. The diagram shows a trapezium OPQR in which OP is parallel to RQ. I can see it in the picture. The position vectors of P and Q, that means from O, so OP and OQ, uh, to the origin O are given by, okay, in column form they gave it. The magnitude of RQ is twice the magnitude of OP. This is this, I want to underline it. And we're going to definitely use this statement. And then they say, show that the position vector of R, that means um, um, OR, is going to be this. Okay, so let's start. Uh, if I'm going to say, let's first work with the magnitude of RQ is twice OP. Now, if I have OP, can I, can I just show you? OP in this direction is going to be, I just want to correct my pen, it's going to be 3, negative 2, negative 1. Okay. They say this one is twice, then it's 3, negative 2, negative 1. That's what stands there. So I can start with that statement by saying, okay, um, let's just see, um, RQ, RQ, is equal to twice OP, so it's 2, and then it's going to be that 3, negative 2, negative 1, which will then be equal to 6, negative 4, and negative 2. Okay, now remember vectors. Can I just, can I show you the page in the textbook? So page 2, 2, 9, and page 300, 230, that's definitely going to help you. Okay, 
But show that the position vector of R, so OR, can I, can I first show you where is OR? Okay, here is OR. Okay, now how will I find that? You can take the long, no, that you don't take the longest. But I, you must just start at O and you must end at R and find information. So let's just see, I have R, do I have OQ? Yes, I have OQ. So I can go like this. And then do I have, I have QR, but I can, I have RQ, but I can find QR by just changing the direction by multiplying with negative one. So I can basically say, therefore, again my pen, QR equals negative one, six, negative four, negative two. So that will be negative six, four, and two. Okay, now let's follow that green road. <clears throat> so I'm going to say, Q, I'm going to keep the other color. OQ is going to, no, no, not OQ. Um, let's, I'm keep going to keep to read. I'm going to say, I just want my pictures a bit. OR, let's go. They want OR. Now, what is the long road for OR? Start where I start, end where I end. So it's going to be OQ plus QR. So OQ, okay, so OQ is going to be, let's just find 5 and 1, so let's put it in, 5, 1, 2, and QR is going to be negative 6, 4, and 2. And now I can just add it, so it's going to be negative 1, it's going to be 5, and it's going to be Four. Okay, so negative one, five, as well as four. So therefore, I can even end that, I would always end with that statement. OR is equal to this. Okay, let's go to the next one. I think let's go to the exam report because I'm, the next one I think is going to be a bit different. Exam report's not too long, so we can check quickly. Question 10, not 10, but we are at 11. Can maybe just read what they sell. Say, learners either misinterpret position vector wrongly as unit vector. No, position ve vector is from the origin. Unit vector is a magnitude of 1. Okay. Um, or magnitude, no. So, otherwise, it was well answered. Those who did not realize that RQ2 st um, started by using OR. Okay. And there is the answer. Let's go to the, to the next number B part. To the question paper, back to the question paper. Okay, let's just look at that B. Okay, so let's start. Use a scalar product to calculate the size of angle PQR. Now, if I'm going to find angle PQR, so let's just start. Angle PQ. Oh, Nina, PQ, P O R. Okay, P O R. So you can either go out, which will work in this case, or in. But because I have O P and O R, so I'm going to work with I have O P and I write it down. And remember, if they give it as a column vector, your answer must also be a column vector. Okay, they didn't give it as base vectors. O R, and that's why you found it. And if you did not, you just use it. Very nice. That show that is then working. Okay. So if I'm going to find the angle, I'm first going to find the scalar product. So I'm going to say O P multiply O R, and that's going to be three multiply negative one plus negative two multiply five plus negative one multiply 4. And that's going to be negative 3, negative 10, negative 4, and that's going to be negative 17. Okay, now what is the formula? Okay, then I've, I also must find uh, the magnitude of OP. Okay, it's with Pythagoras theorem. So let's start. 
it's just going to be 3 squared plus negative 2 squared plus negative 1 squared. And that's going to be 9 plus 4 plus 1, and that's the square root of 14. And then I do exactly the same with OR. And then it's going to be, okay, negative 1 square plus 5 square plus 4 square. And that is going to be 1 plus 25 plus 16, and that's the square root of 42. Don't, don't go to decimals. Leave it in the root form. Okay. So then I'm going to start with the statement by saying cos theta is equal scalar product over this magnitude 14 and 42. And now you can press it on the calculator. So now you can press everything in one step. Make sure your calculator is on the grease again. So mode mode 1. Then say shift cos bracket. Then you can say negative 17. Uh, divide and you can even put a bracket and say square root 14 times square root 42 close the bracket equals and don't not only write say theta it's cos theta is the ratio but the angle is going to be one and again first your full calculator display maybe it can help you scoring a mark if your approximation is incorrect and then Always check. Sometimes they say to the nearest degree, but if they say nothing, go to the, what the front page is saying. Angles, degrees, one decimal place. So then theta is equal to 134.5 degrees. And that will be your final answer. Okay, let's just go to the report again. Don't think there's a lot. It's just checking the answer. Um, so if I go there, it's basically just checking, and maybe just check what they said, well answered, yes, because it's very, very, very straightforward. Question number 12. This is a cone, okay. The diagram shows a container in the shape of an inverted cone with its circular base upright and horizontal. The height of the container is 30 centimeters, and the base radius is 18 centimeters. Water is flowing into the container. When the height of the water is 8 centimeters, the surface of the water has radius r centimeters, and the volume of the water is v cent cubic centimeters. Okay, very nice. They gave you the formula for the volume of a cone, and then they say, Express R in terms of H and hence show this formula. Okay, now I'm going to work, and, and this is a very nice example to go to, and I think that is really going to help you. It's in my textbook, page 298, the mathematics, AS level mathematics textbook, example 35. Okay. So basically, I'm going to, it's similarity, because I'm, I'm just taking the triangles out. So I'm tr taking out, um, can I show you? It's almost like this, do you see? So this triangle, this small one here, I'm going to show you, this triangle is similar to this triangle. Okay, the angles are 19, that angle are the same for both. So basically, I can go and say R over 18, or, uh, yes, I think I'm going to work with it like this. So R over 18 is equal, and then the small one, I'm putting the small ones on top, so H, because I can see it's smaller, over 30. Okay, so basically, I'm going to now just uh, cross multiply. So if I cross multiply, I'm going to say it's 18 H equals 30 R. And now I'm going to make R the subject of the formula. So I divide 30 and I divide 30. And I get that the value of R, and if I simplify it, it's going to be 3 over 5 H. Okay, that's going to be the value of R. Now I'm going to go on. 
and I'm going to the volume. Okay, so if I am using that formula, which is 1, 3, pi, r squared, h. And now in the place of r, I'm substituting that. So 1 th pi, and I'm, it's going to be 3 over 5, and it's going to be 8, and it's squared, and it's h. So it's 1 over 3 pi, and then it's going to be 9 out of 25 h squared h. So if I simplify this, if I must say 1 third, I multiply 9 over 25, and I simplify. So I think the best is to press it ABC, but I get 3 over 25. I get the pi, and this h to the power of 3. And that's, so they were again very nice by helping me to say show. So I can say, therefore, V is equal to this. Why did they do that? Is for the question number B, because... Question number B is actually quite challenging. Okay, so if I go to number B, again, I first think I must go to the exam report. So let's just see quickly the exam report. Uh, that was not that. We can go on. This is question 12. Um, so the whole question was extremely poorly answered. The relationship between R and H was problematic. You, you had to use similarity. Many calculation, uh, calculated a volume instead of finding the required expression. Okay, and there they just show you what you did. Okay, you could have either say R over H. I did it actually when I was working out. Or, or, and then just put that ratio or did it as I did. Okay, but it will give you the same. So let's just, so the, that 2 over 5H. So let's just go back to the question paper. And there, and I'm going to go back there, and then I'm going to go back. Okay. So water flows into the container at the rate of 36 cubic centimeter per second. Okay, that's very important. So I'm just going to okay, per second. Find in terms of pi the rate of change when h is this. So this is rate of change. You will find this on page 280. Look at example 22. And you can also look on page 281, example 23. This is new in the syllabus, and I think it's, it's a bit still um, not so worked through already. So let's just look at the example, bring it in, say a few things in that. Okay, but <clears throat> the first thing that you do, I am going to differentiate. And that's why they let you do A, because they wanted you to use this correct formula and not the incorrect one. So they actually helped you. So I'm going to differentiate now, and I'm going to say dV over 2H. And I'm going to get 3 over 25. Remember, pi is just a constant. And... I multiply it with the 3 there. I differentiate to h, not to x. And then it's going to be squared. So if again I simplify, it's 9 over 25 pi h squared. Okay. So now, or I'm, I'm just because I'm going to substitute, you can also write it as this. I think later on I'm going to use it more that formula. Now, now I come to that rate of change. So... The rate of change. Okay, so I'm there. So I'm telling you that water flows into the container. So, and you see it's volume. So it's actually saying the volume to the amount, to time is 36. That's, that's what that statement is saying to you. So there comes my extra statement in. But... They are asking me, they, what they ask me is in, in the rate of change of age. So they want, with time age, they want this. That is what they want. Now, it's almost like you can, it's, it's, I'm going to use the chain rule, but see if it's correct. Because if I look at this, I'm going to say, okay, um, 
But the problem is the V's must cancel out. So what I can do, if I swap this one around, look here, I make it DH over, because I want the H on top, DV. Do you see? So basically, because I can say, okay, let me roll this slightly, DH over DV equals 25 over 9 pi h squared, which I'm doing there. Why am I doing that? Because then I have dv over dt, and I'm doing it like that so that this cancel out. So, no t. Why will I make a t now? So stupid. Okay. So, over dt, like that. Cancel and then I'm and. So I'm basically just going to take now the swap around. And I multiply it with that 36. Okay. And what do I get? Say 25 times 36 divide 9. I get 100 over pi h squared. But I know now I can substitute the 15 in. So now I can go and say 100 over pi, and I can make the 15, and I can square it. And then I'm going to get 100 over 2, 2, 5, pi. And if I simplify that, I'm going to get 4 over 9. But remember, I just want to... The pi is at the bottom, so therefore um, dh over dt, why am I struggling now so much there, is equal to 4, let's just make it, it was just not clear there, okay, centimeter per second. Okay, I think this one is just that you have to change it around, but just always work, make sure what variables you are working, what is going to be in the numerator, what is going to be in the denominator, and just work with that. Okay, let's go to the report. So if I go to the report, uh, question this, question, uh, okay, 12, and let's just go to the B again. A volume quant um, quantity was calculated, and they did not realize that the rate of change is a derivative. Okay. So there, and there I explained very good. They, they don't show you that you turn it around and this, but, but as I said, that's the reason, because you can see it actually there, that they turn it around. And then they got this, and then they substitute, and then they got their final answer. Okay. I must say this is also a level three. This is this is this was quite challenging, and I think also only your stronger students will maybe be able to come to this level. But it's always like this: as soon as you were exposed to a certain type of question, when it comes more or less the same again, you will be able to get it correct. As your final exams approach, I want to highlight the importance of the Y equals M X plus C mathematics textbooks. If you don't have them yet, you can find them at the following bookshops. These textbooks will be your reliable study companions, guiding you towards mathematical success. For educators aiming for exceptional maths exam results, start using the Y equals MX plus C mathematics textbooks used by leading schools in your classroom. They are part of the NEET catalog and can be easily obtained within your ministry's textbook budget. Make sure to communicate your request to your region's procurement department to empower your learners with the best educational resources. Furthermore, schools have the option to place direct orders with us and we offer bulk order discounts. Reach out to us via email at the address below. Best of luck in your maths journey.